There's a new street fighter on your windowsill. The weapon is peace. The word is... Hello, Marvel Legends. It's your boy, DG here. And somewhere around here, I've got a knife. That's becoming a cliche, so I have to say it. But, ah, <laughs> there it is. I've got a knife. So why do I have this knife and these two big beefy boys here? Because we got ourselves a big old unboxing. Now, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stop. Look, look at that glare from the sun. F this sun. This is like three o'clock in the afternoon. It's like prime time Sunsville. No, I'm cutting this. Okay, we're back. The sun's gone down slightly. This is really annoying because I could use uh, this time to do something else and then I could film this unboxing later when it's darker. But the fact of the matter is I've got my address on the screen. <laughs> I've got this gigantic box from France and we all know what's in here. What have we all been mailing away to France for these last few weeks? Yes, it is the Nimrod 3-pack. Oh my god! Apparently they have started popping up in Forbidden Planet and stuff, but you know what? I ain't in Forbidden Planet. I'm at home in the bunker, and I want my Nimrod 3-pack. Or at least I want one third of it. Because I want my Nimrod. I don't really care too much about Psylocke and Phantom X. But luckily, other people in the Marvel Legends community do. So, I'm cracking this little bad boy open here. And we're going to take a lovely look at all the gorgeous figures and then I'm going to be packing up our two mutants and sending them off to someone who's going to split the cost with me. So it's not a bad little deal actually. But you know, by that sort of financial finagling, Nimrod works out slightly more expensive than your average deluxe figure. And I'll take that. Oh, it's heavy. Heftometer is high. Boom! There it is, the Nimrod 3-pack. Look at that. You probably can barely hear me because it's blocking out the sound. And the sun. Oh, well, I'm still getting the glare on my forehead, but we'll do what we can. Have a look at the art on the back as well. I don't know why reviewers show these because we've all seen it a million times on pictures. Oh, wow. Nimrod looks amazing. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm seeing Nimrod for the first time now, and he looks so big, so big and beefy. Psylocke looks gorgeous in that artwork. It's like, oh, she's, a, she's a babe. All right, let's crack this open, shall we? Oh, it's, it's heavy. This is, this is good. This is good. We're very happy. Well done. Well done, Amazon France. Uh, as soon as I saw Nimrod announced, I was like, oh, I've, I gotta get this. He's big, he's bulky, he's pretty coloured. And then I saw that it was, you know, an Amazon ex exclusive, can't get it in England yet. And I was like, ah, viva la France. <laughs> so yeah, this was well worth doing. Let's slide this out very carefully, very gingerly, if you will. Oof. Oh, so much bright, flashy, translucent pink. Oh man, this looks good. All right, I'm gonna take out his little, his little blast effects first, because these are super pretty. These are bigger than I thought. These didn't look so big in the, in the, the promo shots, but these look great. And yeah, like the, these sort of can move around and wiggle and jiggle. Oh, okay, we're off to a good start. I got a little more here, oh man. God, these look these figures look good. These look really good. Ah, oh, no, no plastic crack. Nimrod just lifts lifts straight out, and here he is. Look at the size of this guy. Look at this big hefty mother. I'm going to pop him up on here, and I'm going to move Apocalypse and Juggernaut, Juggernaut, so that we can see him a bit bit more clearly. Oh, begin the Spinotron Five Thousand. Ludicrously expensive. And this is what all the fuss is about. This is Nimrod, who I've been doing my homework on this time, because I've had a few figures where I'm like, this is a figure, don't know much about it. But yeah, so I, I was you know, reading my, my wikis, so I know that he's like, you know, sort of evolved Sentinel, basically. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's his, I've done my in-depth research. And he has his beautiful sort of dragonfly looking back piece, which is in the uh, House of X uh, storyline, or at least it appears briefly. He's not in it very much. He's in like the flash forwards, but it is kind of cool. Uh, I like the 
I, I like the initial House of X story, but then it lost me because X-Men are just not relatable anymore. It's all like Game of Thrones. They're all like, oh, we're different and separate from the human race. We've got our own thing. We're so much better and smarter. And it's like, you get really unlikable, guys. But yeah, here he is with the back piece on as well. And look at how pretty that is. Oh my God, that's so pretty and slightly crooked. <laughs> I'll play around with that. But this, this was worth getting. This is really, really nice. And I'll take him off the Spinatron so that you can see how he looks next to other chunky baths. So he's definitely a uh, juggernaut sort of size. If you, like, if you like your juggernaut size, then you're gonna like this fella here. I've got a terrible cat. Uh, I made a choice with the camera angle. It's like, do you see the character's feet or do you see the top, the top of my head? And I arrogantly decided top of the head wins out. But yeah, here's Apocalypse and Juggernaut. So Juggernaut maybe slightly higher on the heftometer. Um, Apocalypse looks positively skinny compared to these two guys though. These guys have been hit, hitting the gym. These are like, these guys have been packing on mass. They've been cultivating size. So yeah, they are gonna look amazing on the shelf, even more amazing with the HasLab Sentinel and the Prime Sentinel. That's, oh, that's gonna look good. That's gonna look really, really nice. So we have our Nimrod and let's have a little play about He's got, does he have finger articulation or is that, is that molded? Nope, it's molded. I was going into toy biz mode for a second there. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do finger articulation here. Get out with your finger articulation. Now then, folks have said that it's not easy necessarily to get him sort of firing in sort of the way that they would want him to be, which I think it looks like he's kind of like going for a high five. Um, but I think it'll take some time to play around and find the best kind of poses for him. I'm always very careful doing these, I try to be careful doing these unboxing videos because I want to be entertaining. So always like be doing something, not just like sat there quietly, just like fiddling around with stuff. But at the same time, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. So here's a very basic kind of shot. I see what people mean. Like it, it seems like his hand has to be quite high to be firing forward. Maybe if he's aiming for an X-Man though, sort of on the floor, this kind of downward arc actually works pretty well. So that's kind of cool. And I'll put the other one on as well because these effects are so bright and colorful. Uh, I wanna have them both. So maybe he's firing is it difficult to get him firing upwards? Is that what people are saying? Gosh, the elbow joints are a bit stiff. Then there's something from manhandling them and <laughs> maybe doing something terrible if I wasn't careful. Or lucky, actually. <laughs> Care has nothing to do with it. It's dumb luck. Okay, that is kind of fun. That it's, it's a real sort of showcase piece, this, because he's just so bright, like this white. I'm just waiting to get like chocolate stains and <laughs> spill my tea on him or something. But this is great. And he has, of course, the other head as well. So I'll pop that out. Yeah, man. There we go. So he has the pink face as well, which I think is more of like the classic Nimrod version. And he has his two fisted hands as well. So you can have him like, you know, clenching his fist if you want, but honestly, come on, you want to have these, these beautiful, bright pink uh, shooting, firing effects, laser effects, what I'm trying to think here. So yeah, I'm gonna pop Nimrod down the front here. Can I angle him up a little bit so he's looking at the camera? Ah, close enough. But yeah, this, this is nice. This is really, really good. So that's the start. Now we have Psylocke and Phantom X. I'm not gonna play around with these characters very much because I am selling them on. Uh, but I've gotta, I've gotta get them out anyway. So, well, we can at least do that together. So let's get Psylocke out first since she's not the most original. She's based a lot on the, on the previous version of Psylocke. I'll be very careful popping her out. First of all, she's got the same style of sword, but it's cast in a different plastic. Uh, it's the same, it looks the same as the Nimrod pink, which is nice. It's kind of, it's not as translucent. It's more sort of solid. Ooh, and her, her butterfly psychic thing looks nice. Cause it's actually, if you can see, it's got shading. Yeah, you can see there. It looks like, um, what's the Shia woman's sister? Warbird, Deathbird? You know what I'm talking about. She has like a, a crest around her head like this. 
It's kind of cool. She has her psychic knife. And the psychic knife I never really liked because you have it looks bad from the back. I like I like accessories to look good 360. You know, you put Psylocke on the Spinatron 5000 and, you know, she looks good from one side and then the other side it's like missing the back of her psychic blade. Mm. It's like kind of breaking kayfabe there, you know? She also has a fisted hand, which I'll pop out later. But most importantly, most importantly, here is Psylocke herself. And she looks like you would expect. Not entirely like, like I would expect. Her hair is a really nice, dark, deep purple. I assume from the pictures that her hair was uh, black. It looks, it looks black. Um, but actually, no, it's, it's a real deep purple. Uh, if you see, yeah, you can just about see in, in the sun, which I was, I was complaining about the sun, and I still will, the sun's not forgiven, but you can see that her hair is a very deep purple. And that, that looks really pretty. That's a great face. I, I have my side look up here. Let's do a little... Oh, come on. There we go. So let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison of the two Psylocke's. We have X-Force Psylocke looking all black and ninjury there. And we have our classic oh, trying not to knock things over. I've made a real rod for my own back with all these figures on the, on the desk. We have our Jim Lee Psylocke. So I'm still uh, most happy with the Jim Lee one, I think. Of course, it's the iconic costume. And, you know, we love our iconic costumes. These are, these are our childhoods. These are the comics we read. These are the figures that we fell in love with. So, yeah, uh, original Psylocke always wins out. But if you're building X-Force, then fill your boots. This is, this is the Psylocke you want. This is her, her black, stealthy, assassin, ninja gear. Boom, there you go. I'm not gonna play around with articulation or whatever because all her joints are nice and un unsnapped and un... You, you know what I mean when I say unsnapped? Like the first time you snap or bend a joint, it's like you get that little bing, like that's the first time that's happened. And it's like, oh, that felt good. All right, now the figure that a lot of people have been really after is the Phantom X. Our first Phantom X since the Toy Biz days, I think, stop me if I'm wrong. I mean, I don't really care. I'm not a modern X-Men person. But there are a lot of people who are. And for you, for that, I salute you. All right, I won't manhandle him too much. I'll hold the black, the black of the boots, so I don't mess up the white. But he's a handsome looking figure. You know, that's, that's the thing. Like, even though I don't collect this sort of iteration of the X-Men, just because t money, I was gonna say time, just got all the time in the world, money and space won't allow, but, if you're going for, you know, your modern X-Men, your post... Hey, sorry for the break there. I got a phone call. I... Who, who just calls randomly? I have friends who just, like, call me randomly for a chat, and I'm like, don't do that! I don't... If, if, if I'm gonna have a conversation with someone, I need to have, like, written notice of, like, you're gonna have a conversation at this time. Start dreading it now. I hate, I hate talking on the phone. My girlfriend loves talking on the phone. I'm like, don't make me do this. Just send nudes. So here we go. This is, uh, she doesn't, or does she? She does. So anyway, um, Phantom X, <laughs> she doesn't. Uh, the, yep, the white is beautiful and clean. The line work, she does. Um, the mask looks great. So yeah, if, if you like your Phantom X, then this is the one to go for. I'm not gonna comment too much, as I said, because I wanna keep them, keep them safe, keep them nice and clean. But I do love the two guns he comes with. Uh, if I can pop them out, there we go, gun number one. It's just, I don't think, it looks, it looks a little bit like a uh, Robocop's gun, just with a, a, sight, a sight on it. Which is terrible that I'm a, ro a huge Robocop fan and the, the name, Auto, ro Auto 9, that was it. I was going to say, the name escapes me. I'm not like a gun, I'm not a, I'm not a gun person, but if I ever had like a replica gun, oh to have Robocop's Auto 9, my God. That would be up on the wall. And people would be like, wow, is Dave, you're like a gun guy? I'm like, no, but I am a Robocop guy. And now he's got the two, the two gun flashes, the muzzle flashes. I love from, uh, from War Machine, 
like, Hasbro seem to like their muzzle flashes. And it's like, oh, yes, are we doing this? Because I am, I am here all day, seven days a week and twice on Sundays for muzzle flashes. That just looks cool. All right. And uh, he has two smoke. Smoke bits. I mean, dig those out here. Actually, uh, I won't do them out because you know what they look like and this video is going to get boring. So, there we go. <laughs> you see that that's why these, these videos are quick and rapid fire because I do them for my own attention span. So if I'm getting bored of myself, then you guys have clicked through this a long time ago. Anyway, that's it. That's the review. That's the unboxing. What are my thoughts? Worth it. Old Man Logan and Hawkeye? Ugh, not sure if it was worth it. Gotta be honest. I, I think it was. I think it was. But, like, I, I, I wasn't, like, surprised. I was like, okay, this was what I was expecting. But, you know, I had high hopes for Nimrod, and it, it's so rare that high hopes actually live up to your expectations. And this is a case where that is very much the case. Nimrod is big. He's bold. He's so brightly coloured. He's so white. Like, his mum washes his costume in, like, the personal whitey whites. So this is a great addition. I'm gonna put him, you know, next to Apocalypse and Juggernaut at the back of the X-Men shelf, looking big and beefy. So it's just gonna stand out. And like I always say, just pop with colour there at the back, or lack thereof, being bright white. All right, folks. I'm not going to ramble on any, any longer. This was Nimrod. This was the three pack. Was it worth it? Absolutely. High rating on the heftometer. I like this guy very, very much. Did he get a chef's kiss? No, because I'm only keeping one third of the pack. So, you know, if I had to keep all of it, I would be begrudging because I don't want the other two figures. But for what it is, standing alone for my, my half of what, of what I paid for Nimrod himself here, yeah well worth the price of admission. Guys, thanks very much for watching. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. It's something I found out while I hit the Spinatron. If you hit the notification bell, you find out about the videos. Uh, then again, if any of you are on the same Marvel Legends forums that I am, you find out about all of them because I spam the hell out of them. People love me for that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. And until then, keep displaying model behavior.